Hello. Hello, Dr. Bob. Yes, sir. Come on in. Brian. Brian. How are you doing, man? Good. Our endocannabinoid system regulates everything in our body. Our immune system, digestive system, cardiovascular system, nervous system, endocrine system, skin, skeleton, everything in our body is homeostatically regulated by our endocannabinoid system. And yet it's not taught in medical school? You know, there's something a little flawed here. <laughs> Even if you've never smoked a joint in your life, you have sort of internal cannabis in your body. You have an endocannabinoid system. Endo meaning inside. You've got cannabinoid receptors in your brain and in your liver and your spleen and your bladder and your immune system cells. You've got receptors all over your body for this plant. And so when you smoke, you're sort of stimulating and working within the endocannabinoid system and you're stimulating your cannabinoid receptors. That helps to regulate your immune system, your energy, your metabolism, metabolism, your blood sugar, it sort of tamps down inflammation. Your endocannabinoid system does a lot to maintain homeostasis in your body. So there's at least two types of cannabinoid receptors that we know about so far. There's CB1 and CB2. So the CB1 receptors are located all over your brain and it's actually the most plentiful G-coupled receptor in your brain. Although there aren't any in your brain stem, which means that you can't overdose from cannabis, it won't stop you from breathing the way that you could say overdose from pain medicines. Just today an article came out describing how um, the endocannabinoid system was modulating the synapses of glutaminergic and gamma neurons in our brain and how uh, certain mutations in some of the involved proteins forming synapses in the brain are modified in people with autism. So we see a link between autism and the endocannabinoid system and that's been pioneered by a woman in California, Miko Hesta Perez, who has a severely autistic son. And in desperation she got a permit for him and gave him cannabis and it changed everything. So today, after she's been doing this for a few years, we now have a scientific validation. You know, people ask me, like, so what's the most important thing you learned? By far, the most important thing I learned was that THC and CBD can kill cancer cells, that they can kill cancer cells while leaving healthy cells intact. They trigger a programmed cell death, which is called apoptosis. And not only do they trigger apoptosis, but they prevent the cancer cells from being invasive, from metastasizing. They prevent the, a growing tumor from signaling that it needs more blood supply, which is called angiogenesis. So cannabinoids, not just as a treatment for nausea and decreased appetite that happens because of chemotherapy, but cannabinoids actually being chemotherapy, actually treating cancer, that's really exciting to me. You know, what's so interesting is the medical marijuana community is better educated than the doctors. And I think that uh, what we should all take home from that is that as you learn and understand this stuff, it means we have to make the changes. We have to interact with our government. We have to reshape how energy flows through them so that this phase change will occur. All of us have to participate in it. You know, we want to see the Berlin Wall fall. <laughs>